desperate need of a victory and something positive to build upon. You never know when that team in the SEC is going to hit its stride late and be a factor, if nothing else, a spoiler. One of these teams could be such a squad. It'll all start today. And then first play, six seconds and a bucket alley-oop slam to Noah Carter. That's a called play from the locker room, maybe from Como. That's how we're going to open up. I think that might be the quickest basket we've seen all season. Vanderbilt in white, Mizzou in black. Mignon, a talented point guard, having another fine year. Sets up the mid-range jumper is true, and we're tied at two. Missouri starting five. Again, the problem has not been the guard play. In fact, East, Bates, and Honor, all three of them shooting 40% or greater from downtown. Not many teams in the country can have that kind of claim, and there is Honor pulling the trigger. Carter offensive rebound and the stick back. Four early points for the pride of Dubuque, Iowa. Both of these teams really struggle at times on the glass. Vanderbilt starting five. Tyron Lawrence once again kind of quietly having another outstanding campaign, averaging over 14 points and five rebounds a game. Wide open shooter, that's Williams. That one rims out. A sophomore a transfer from Texas A&M. Yeah, he struggled. Noah Carter, somebody better cover 35 in black. Six quick points for Carter. Run the floor, transition defense. Missouri with that hard hedge on the ball screen defense. Everything but the bucket on the spin move that time for Evan Taylor. Missouri quickly, Carter feeling it! Carter, it's a 9-0 run for Noah Carter. Vanderbilt does have two, but Carter has all nine Missouri points. What a difference a few days makes because we were in Como in that game against Arkansas when they had such a slow start. The very opening tip, keep your eye on Butler to the right of your screen. He's gonna set a screen right there. And that leads to the open alley oop. That's a call from the hotel last night. I Here's what I'm gonna run off the tip. I love that play. A design play off winning the tip. Gomodors in the front court. Good cut that time by Williams. Williams was open but had it knocked away. Here comes Mizzou on the attack. Honor spot and fire, can't connect. And he has the green light at all times, especially in transition. Another bucket that time for Mignon. Ahead of the pack, Missouri is off and running. And that's Bates, who's been by far and away their top scorer of late. Sure seems like Missouri has made a determined effort. They're going to come in transition quickly. Taylor on a pull up, nothing but the bottom of the net. I love the offense we're seeing Heck from yeah. both teams. They keep this pace up for 40 minutes. We're all in favor of that. East on a wheel and kick. Carter, oh no. Carter on another three. That one barely grazes the iron. Yeah, he's been 29% from deep this season. Lawrence raises, fires up a three. Tapped out of bounds, and it will be Missouri basketball. Dennis Gates now in his second year in Como. Last year, of course, a breakthrough season, leading Mizzou to the NCAA tournament, picking up a victory over Utah State in the opening round. This year, certainly high expectations again. But they have not had things go their way so far this season, really missing the likes of Kobe Brown and Des Moines Hodge. Yeah, Butler just four of 20 from deep, kind of harpooned that shot. <laughs> you know, Noah Carter's got nine. He hasn't been in double figures any of the last four. He may be in double figures by the time we get to the under 16. Shot clock down to 10. Up and under move. Rims off, tap up, no good. Carter rips down another rebound. Lubin was right there for the easy putback. East, baseline, Jay rattles in, 13-6 Missouri. 13 points in the opening stanza. 
for a team that at times this year has really struggled on offense. I don't think there's any question. Dennis Gates has told his team we're going to come out in transition early. Complete attack mode in the opening four and a half minutes. Carter already has the most points he's had in the game in the last five. They dump it into Lawrence. Pops out of there. Carter with another rebound. Carter with nine points and three rebounds already. East tries to split a double. Little oh. Euro step and he gets it to drop. Vanderbilt crowd and Jerry Stackhouse wanted a walk. And to add insult to injury, Tyron Lawrence is down on the baseline, clutching his left leg. Timeout on the floor as we step aside with 15.08 to go. It's Missouri 15 and Vanderbilt 6 coming up. The coach, Mark Wise, on the move. We're going to get a little baseline vantage point. Time assistant coach. You can speak on behalf of this as well as anybody. The amount of communication that goes on during a game between head coach and assistant coaches. Yeah, there's no question about it. You have to do some uh, um, hand signals. You have to uh, have, have eye contact with the head coach when he looks over, wanting to know, you know, how many fouls does this guy have? How many right. timeouts do we have left? Stuff like that. Mignon on a three. Missed it short. And Missouri has been dominating the glass. That's been a problem spot this year for Mizzou. They're minus five on the glass, but so far they have imposed their will on Vanderbilt. Again, the action's down on my end now, so everybody on the bench, you can you can you can hear the squeak uh, the squeak of the sneakers. You can you can hear the, the players communicating defensively. When the action goes away from you, there's nothing. You you have nothing. And it's one of the beauties, and I know some opposing coaches have complained about it, but it's one of the beauties and unique traits of playing a Memorial Gym. It's unlike anything else we see in college basketball. Well, remember in the old days, Mike, they wouldn't even put the coaches up right. on the sideline. They had to stay right in front of their bench. That's a nice cut by Bates right down Main Street to get that out under play. And right now, Vanderbilt's getting a bird's eye view for the dominance of Missouri right there by that bench. 14 points in the paint already for Mizzou. Yeah, good to see Tyron Lawrence walk right by me, getting back to the bench. We'll see if he gets back in the game. Missouri goes to this zone that we've seen them play for the last couple of games. That's one of the talented freshmen, Isaiah West, out of Springfield, Tennessee. Here's the other thing, Mike. When people on the bench stand up, you can't see anything here. East responds with a triple of his own. How about this start for Mizzou? Nine of 13 from the field. Mizzou going to play one on one in the post. Taking it up on the seven footer instead, the kick out pass. Baseline drive. They work it around. A three from the wing. Got it. With a hand in his face to Isaiah West. Two quick buckets. Mike, are you a little surprised at the pace both teams are playing with? I, I very much so. I guess my question for you, who does that favor? <laughs> That's a really good question, and I'm not <laughs> sure who. I, because both these teams rely on backcourt scoring so much. Well, we know one thing. Missouri is the better three-point shooting team. And that's a, an area that Vanderbilt has really struggled with. 23% in conference play. Mizzou's got three guards that all shoot over 40% from downtown. So you'd like to think that Vanderbilt would need the easy baskets maybe a little bit more. Yeah, Bart Lennox has to break up the meeting. Now Pat Adams. Now, Pat is telling Dennis Gates, I, I can hear him point blank, let it go. Just let it go. See, I had a better view for that one, Mark. You might have the best seat in the house for, <laughs> for, that, for the action on that side. I'm sitting here eye level to Pat Adams' ankles. There's that 45 cut that Mizzou likes to utilize in the half court. A rare miss for Tamar Bates, who's been absolutely sensational in conference play for Missouri. 
Eight-point lead as we approach the 12-minute mark of the first half. Mizzou had a little miscommunication, but, but did get their man-to-man -man defense settled there. Three ball, nothing but the bottom of the net for Evan Taylor, the lefty. He had 14 in that loss to Auburn. And Taylor has shot the ball much better lately. All right, Mike, I'm coming back to you. Mark Wise is coming back. He's off probation from the baseline to center court. Won last year in the SEC tournament. Remember, the Commodores in league play were 11 and 7. And that, of course, led to some higher expectations this season. But a couple things have gone wrong with injuries, and it just has gotten off to the wrong start for the Commodores this year. Any coach that complains to me about dealing with injuries, until you've gone through what Vanderbilt has had to go through the last five or six yeah. seasons, from, from Darius Garland to Aaron Neesmith, Liam Robbins last year getting hurt late in the season, Colin Smith this season. I mean, they have had more than their fair share of bad luck. Yeah, they had high hopes for Colin Smith out with the Achilles for the rest of the season. That ball was partially blocked by Bates. Vanderbilt saves it, 13 on the shot clock. Lawrence, wide open three. Not going to get a better look than that, but an offensive rebound for Taylor. East right now is banged up on the other end. Sean East, and he's holding his left knee. So now Missouri fans holding their breath. Take another look on the drive, the plant. It looked like he just knocked knees. Hard to tell, but this is not a good sign. Yeah. I couldn't make out the number for the Vanderbilt player, but it looked like it was just knee-on-knee -knee contact. Let's see if we can get another look here. Driving the baseline, right-hand side. I think it's on the lane. Yeah, yeah, I do you think there's a bumping of the knees, perhaps? And it looks like his knee bent back in just a little bit. Yeah, I thought he made contact knee-on-knee knee with I, I think J.Q. Roberts. Yes, 24 Roberts. It's right there was the contact. And as weird as this might sound, I hope that is the injury in yes. this case, because that would be the least contact. Yes. Right, the least significant of the options. It'll be interesting to see who runs the point now for Mizzou. Nice pass and a foul drawn by J.Q. Roberts, the freshman out of Bloomington, Indiana. Take another look at the execution. There's the hard hedge by Maychak. He just has too far to go to get back into the play. Commits the foul and puts Roberts to the free throw line. Jaqueline Roberts, they call him JQ, a four-star recruit. He scored eight in his first career start at Ole Miss. That remains a career high. Help on the way for both these programs. Talking to our own Paul B. and Cardi. They each have multiple top 100 recruits coming in next season. A three point lead for Mizzou. An 8 0 run right now for the Commodores. So the answer to my question is Nick Honor. He moves to the point. Bates, one on one, banging bodies, trying to carve out space, and terrific defense. Isaiah West never gave up ground. Just stood his ground, did he not? Well, like I love these opposite passes. Open three and an air ball fired up. Calton, Graham Calton doesn't play a whole lot. No, he does not. Jerry Stackhouse going deep into his bench. Bates, skip pass out of the corner to Carter. Carter, nine early points, looking for 11, can't get it. Weak side rebound by the Commodores, Tyron Lawrence, who's one of the best rebounding guards in this league. Averages over five a game. Mike, don't you feel like Vanderbilt's kind of got the fight of the game back in the middle of the ring? Yeah, well, they, after, after Missouri landed some early blows. Mizzou was like late 80s Tyson in the first round. 
They took a lot of punches, Vanderbilt did, but here they are still standing down by just three. So from that standpoint, advantage Commodores. I don't think Missouri could have gotten off to a much better start to this game, in particular the guy who just went to the bench, Noah Carter, who had nine points in the blink of an eye. Mizzou started nine for 13 from the field. They have missed their last five shots. Now, Kurt Lewis, who continues to play more and more minutes, checks in. Juco Player of the Year at John A. Logan at Illinois. There's the quick trap on the inbounds. We saw them have some success with that against Arkansas. That's a three. And that's a miss for the Commodores, but an offensive rebound by Colton. Shot clock at 10 for Lawrence. Lawrence on a blow by, runs right into Majok and still gets it to go. Right on the seven foot two Majok. Talk about fearless attacking the rim. Honor trapped in trouble and somehow bounces it backwards to Lewis. Baseline jumper kicks off. All of a sudden Mizzou has gone ice cold. Vanderbilt quickly in front court and drawing the foul is Colton. Tyron Lawrence, the left-hander, watch him absorb the contact and hang in the air and actually shoots that bank shot on his way down. High degree of difficulty for the senior. Wow, that is big time stuff. I mean, he's been so good this year. I mean, if anybody deserves to pick up a win in conference play, it's Tyron Lawrence. Williams now will check back in. Jordan Williams, the former Texas A&M Aggie. Good minutes from the freshman Isaiah West. And Colton can't connect. It's a one point game. Mizzou has led the entire way, but Vanderbilt keeps closing the gap. Robinson finds the freshman Butler. Whips it over weak side, strong take, bucket no good, tapped out of bounds, Vanderbilt basketball. Missouri just cannot buy a bucket right now. But I like their offensive set. There was ball reversal, spacing was good, the drive was good. Only the finish didn't go in. Paul Lewis finds Lawrence. Wraparound pass and the foul against Robinson of Mizzou. <laughs> Lawrence is having a tough afternoon so far today. Take another look. They ran an Iverson cut, which allowed him a space on the baseline. And then Robinson kind of inadvertently, I think, creates the foul. Let's see if. Vanderbilt throws it somewhere other than. Oh, no. Wow. That right wasn't the, there. Yeah. Right in the hands of Honor. Didn't even have to work hard to get that steal. Honor directing traffic. Again, Sean East not on the floor after that knee injury. Honor gets held and fouled. So this moves everybody up a slot, if you will. Honor now goes from the off guard to the point. Bates will probably be interchangeable with Robinson in the 2-3. And with Lewis on the floor, this is a smaller lineup. Honor held by Lawrence. That's right in front of the official and an easy call for Byron Jarrett. And it's going to go against Missouri. Yeah, I think they're calling Shaw. Take another look. Shaw wasn't set. See him lean uh, in with the shoulder yeah. there? Yeah. That's an easy call, really. Yeah. Are you amazed at, at this level how many players have trouble setting a legal screen? I can give you a theory about that. I'd love to hear it. Because that's the one that they set in practice that never gets called. Right, right. Yeah, we, you and I watch players maul each other in practice. Yes. And everybody applauds. Great physical play. Unfortunately, that's a foul in the real world of basketball with referees. Here's Shaw leading the pack, driving and getting the bucket in traffic. 
22-19, Mizzou leading. Lawrence around the screen, takes it all the way. Oh. Dipsy do and finishes with the left hand. Why is it left-handers are so much more acrobatic, it seems like, with their finishes? Honor on a three. Can't connect. Knocked out of bounds. That Missouri has had a harder time creating good looks. And then uh, Vanderbilt knocked down some threes, uh, especially with West coming off the bench. You know, he'd only made four threes on the year. He's already made two here this afternoon. We'll see if Mark can continue through this game with no hot chicken. You're on. It's all yours. In his gullet. Under seven <laughs> minutes to go in the first half. <laughs> Commodores looking for their first lead. Lewis whips it into the corner. Williams passed up the three. Shot clock under five. This is Taylor with one at the buzzer, an air ball, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Great defense by Mizzou. You've heard me talk about this all season long. What dictates your quality of shot? Are you dictating it as an offense, or is the defense dictating it? That time, Missouri's defense dictated the quality of shot for Vanderbilt, and it wasn't very good. Great sign for Mizzou with East back in the game. There's certainly a different looking offensive unit with number 55 in black. Yeah, now all the pieces of the puzzle go back to where they normally are. And there he is on the backdoor cut, blazes by the defense and gets the bucket. John East now with nine points. What a season he has had. Vanderbilt exhibiting patience on this possession, but not really going anywhere. Lewis, shot clock under five, in the corner. Baseline jumper is good, so it works out for Tyron Lawrence and the Commodores. Not sure where that play was going <laughs> yeah. for the first 25 seconds. Took a long time to get there. But notice Lawrence did not force the issue, though. Carter, spot and fire, missed it off the front iron. Well, again, I'm going to say this till I'm blue in the face about guard play. If you're going to dribble, go somewhere. Ever how many dribbles yes. you think you need? Divide by two. A lot of dribbling, not a lot of real estate picked up. Shot clock again under five. Lawrence got it, and Vanderbilt has its first lead. But again, the left-hander always gets left. Doesn't mind the contact. It took over 15 minutes, but the Commodores have the lead in this ball game. Shaw finds East. East fade and fire from the baseline. Back iron. I think they want to isolate Lubin here. And out of bounds and off of Vanderbilt to Missouri. Tyron Lawrence, who's averaged better than 15 points a game over his last 10. Gets the screen going to his right, but the left-hander is always going to come back. Absorbs the contact. Did you see his eyes there? They stayed on the prize. So many times when guards, and especially big guys, when they get bumped or beat inside, they, they tend to lower their head, lower their eyes. Lawrence kept his eyes up, saw that shot go all the way in and through. 94th game of Tyron Lawrence's career at Vanderbilt at Monticello, Georgia. Carter near the block, spins and fires. He all of a sudden can't buy one now. Yeah, these are quality looks, though. Missouri two out of its last 13 from the field. Magnon up top to Lubin. Now they're trying to ride the hot hand of Lawrence. Mizzou would not let that happen. This is a late whistle, but it's the correct call. Yeah. Majok knocking Lubin 
off his spot. 3.33 to go. It's a one-point game in Nashville. You know, I, I've been coming here and doing games for 20 years, and you brought up a point that I never thought about, and that is how much communication during a game there is between head coach right. and assistant. Because if you watch a game at a normal arena, you hear that you see the chatter all the time, Correct. whether it's a foul, whether it's a certain, okay, this guy is tired, let's make this substitution. Correct. Assistant coaches are involved in the middle of all of that. Yeah, I think when uh, I became a head coach for the first time, that was my biggest shock. Yeah. Uh, that all the things that I could keep up with as an assistant, you cannot as a head coach. Right. There's just too many things. Got to have some help, almost like coordinators in football. Now that was way too slow in developing the screen for Buck that Butler was trying to set for Bates. East remains in the game. This guy has been pretty quiet, just four points for Bates. Carter got off to the red hot start, and he'll get a chance to add two more to his nine point total at the free throw line. Now, today the SEC Network has another college basketball quadruple header, including the game at 6 o'clock with the Tigers of Auburn taking on the Ole Miss Rebels at the Raucous Pavilion in Oxford. You and I had that matchup way back when right. in Auburn, and Auburn blew them out. Ole Miss, though, has been playing much better basketball and obviously a different team at home. Yeah, they when they get it going offensively, offensively, they're a different squad. This is a very un-Chris Beard-like team, meaning they're offensively driven. Mm -hmm. And his teams of, you know, highly successful teams at Texas and Texas Tech, they were defensively driven. Ten points now for Carter, who actually on his recruiting visit to Missouri asked the coaching staff, is it okay if I bring my boat <laughs> from Dubuque, Iowa. He's a big fisherman. In fact, he's taken Coach Gates and some of his teammates out to fish. Nothing bonding like catching a 12-pound bass or whatever he winds up catching. I don't know. I haven't caught a fish in 20 years, Mark Wise. What good board work by Lubin. Just kind of hung with it. I think you mentioned earlier he's coming off that double-double at Auburn, 17-12. and 12. It's a third all-time double-double for Lubin. Bates, Missouri would love to have him heat up. Carter, meanwhile, on a three. And a long rebound, kicks out to East, finds Honor wide open in the corner. Wow. And missed it. That's his fourth miss, and I think all four have been quality looks. He came in shooting 41% from three. He's now 0 for 4. And look at the traffic that Magnon draws. Three ball from the corner is knocked down by Isaiah West, the freshman. Every once in a while, you need an X-Factor guy. West entered today's game making four threes on the season. He's already made three. This last possession, watch Magnon get in. He absolutely did. I think I, I clocked him about a 4-2-40. <laughs> Very impressive and thorough. Some of us with a mop are not that thorough. We just go through the motions, Mark. Zone for the first time. A little 2-3 with high wings. From the baseline. Nice tap out by Majok. Into the hands of East. Here's Honor on the pro band pitch down low to Carter. Beautiful job by the veteran guard, Nick Honor. But why did it break down the zone? The ball got into the weak spot of that 2-3 right in the free throw line area. A little more than a minute left in this first half. There's Carter on a block from behind. What a first half for Noah Carter. Carter wants it. Carter on a blow by. Carter missed the dunk but got fouled. He almost had an and one here. Watch when the ball goes inside. Here's Carter first in terms of that last attack of the rim. How active has he been here in the first 20? Well, I'll tell you how active. How about 12 points, four rebounds, and a steal in 16 minutes for Noah Carter. Playing in his 140th collegiate game. I mentioned Dubuque, Iowa's hometown population of 60,000. Who's from Dubuque, Iowa, other than Noah Carter? How about Johnny Orr, wow. legendary coach, and Elmer Layden of the Four Horsemen?
What was it like broadcasting some of those <laughs> games, Mark, with the four I, horsemen? I knew that's where you were <laughs> headed. <laughs> and sitting on that one for three days. <laughs> Carter hits the second. And we are back to a one-point game. Been an entertaining game between two teams desperate for a conference win. And really the kind of game I expected. I think this will be close throughout. Well, five out offense, if you will. No post player for Vanderbilt. They've got Lubin out on the perimeter. Yeah, it is a small lineup. Oh. That is the biggest guy on the floor. And Lubin will take the shot, the 6'8", 230-pound sophomore. Not bad for a guy creating his own. There is a six-second differential game clock to shot clock. Carter, double, East, pulls the trigger on a three. And a foul called. And that'll go against Vanderbilt. I mentioned Vanderbilt playing five out. All five players on the perimeter. Lubin gets, that allows Lubin some space to operate one on one. You wouldn't think of a six foot eight guy as your one on one scorer. But he certainly was in that possession. He gets the little dap, if you will, from Magnon. Butler checks in for Mizzou. Shot clock is off. So Missouri will in all likelihood here play for the final shot. A three would tie it. A two would make it a one-point game going into halftime. I'm thinking the ball's got to get in Bates' hands somehow. He's in the corner at the bottom of your screen. Now pops out, gets it from Carter. Six to shoot. Now five. Bates wheeling, dealing, finger roll, no. Tapped out. Vanderbilt's got it, and that will bring us to the end of half number one. Commodores took a while to get a lead, and they'll take a three-point lead to intermission. Here to break it down and everything else, Ron Slay, Patrick Young, and the one and only Peter Byrne. Tigers will see if they can turn that around here in the second half. Again, the first time that one of these teams is going to pick up a dub in conference play. Missouri coming in. At 0-8 in the league, Vanderbilt comes in 0-7 in the Southeastern Conference. Tough shot to get the early going by Mignon on a fade and fire. Not really a three-point shooter, 9 of 28. But in the mid-range, Mignon can be creative and find his own. He was such a big part of Vanderbilt's success in league play last year. Led the league in assist-to-turnover ratio. Carter mismatch gets a little help sees the double they work it around good rotation by Vanderbilt three on the shot clock for Carter missed it great defense that time by the Commodores yeah Missouri was plus 10 in the points in the paint in the first half tried to go back inside with that first possession Mignon oh is that quick killer crossover runs into a Missouri wall though down low now a rise and fire and rattled in by Mignon. Yeah, he can get it going in a hurry. He's kind of been in a mini slump in his last three games, just averaging a little bit over seven per. For a young man who averages 14 and a half on the season. East jump step, missed it, tapped up Butler, no good, out of bounds. It'll be Commodore's basketball. Well, if you're six foot tall, you have to have a little elevation on your jump shot, a little fearless in your ability to create your own look, attack inside against bigger players. Ezra Magnon has all of that. He's two points away from his 93rd career double figure scoring effort. Transfer from UC Davis. Missouri got off to the hot start in the first half. Vanderbilt off to the quick start here in the second 20. Mignon working against the taller defender that time and a great defensive stand by Robinson. That's yeah, a great point by you because Robinson got moved over on Mignon to give the Vanderbilt guard more length Shot clock at five. Now two. Desperation heave, oh. and it hits the bottom of the net. Evan Taylor. Two-thirds of his shots this year are from beyond the arc. 
And a timeout taken by Missouri. Joe. 40% three-point shooter as a career. Man, he looked awfully comfortable there in the two-point range. Yeah, he was a two-time All-Patriot League selection while at Lehigh. Had seven career double-doubles, obviously a little bit of a smaller league size-wise for his 6'6 frame. By the way, Joe Lenardi will join us after the next timeout, the under-16. We wanted to give Joe just a couple <laughs> more minutes to crunch some more numbers. Vanderbilt to the zone. First time we've seen this so far today. How do you attack it? This ball's got to go to the free throw line area. There's the short corner. Carter, long range yes, three. Sir. Bottoms for Noah Carter, having one of his best games of the season. Now 17 points. Entered today's game just 29% from beyond the arc. But has played lights out. Taylor at the top. Finds Lubin. Now Williams. Inside Lubin. Lubin fades. Lets it go and missed it short. I don't think Bandy wants to live in the last five seconds of every possession. And there's a steal by Lawrence. Lawrence takes it right into the shot blocker and draws the foul. There are deep threes, and then there are Carter threes. There's the short corner. Look how far beyond the arc Noah Carter is. But with the clock dwindling, he just shoots that with confidence. Had great rotation, held the follow through. 17 points for Carter. And he has been the spark that Missouri needed in this game at the beginning and then at the beginning of the second half. Six point game. Commodores. Taking the oh. time now a little oh. stutter step the hesitation and then the take by Lubin. How good was that? Pretty nimble for the 6 8 230 pound forward. Carter off the curl tough shot pops out of there and a miss fired up that time by Robinson here come the Commodores Mignon stripped by Carter Carter with his second steal what a performance today by Noah Carter and then Bates on the other end draws the foul and with 15.37 to go, we can now safely tell you Joe Lenardi has worked up a lather in the bunker. He's ready to go, and so are we. Just don't get much bigger in the SEC than Ruff. Joe, I wanted to ask, how does the committee treat wins versus losses or great wins versus bad losses like I, I I'm looking at a team like FAU that has I think three quad one wins but they have a loss in each of the four quadrants how does the committee deal with that certainly each individual committee member mark is you know free to weigh whatever factors at whatever uh, level that they want what I would say based on observing this pretty closely over the years is that really good wins tend to help you more than some bad losses hurt you, provided that you don't have too many of them. I think in FAU's case, losing at home to Bryant, which is not a bad team, right? Uh, maybe so numerically, uh, is not the end of the world because they certainly have the wins to make up for it. Joe, we're in a unique situation now where the SEC 1 through 14, there's just not a lot of bad losses to be had compared to some of the conferences that don't have the same depth. So it's quad one, quad twos all over the place. The non conference schedule really paved the way. Am I right to say this? Paved the way to, for those teams that are in, it's going to take a good amount to get out because you're not going to have many bad losses left on your schedule, only opportunities to enhance your resume. From a league perspective, that's ideal. 
right? You want to minimize the bad loss opportunities for your bubble teams, your at-large candidates, and you want to maximize their chances for, quote-unquote, quality wins. And the way you do that, of course, is to win in the non-conference, but a little bit different in the net era versus, and, and Mark will remember the RPI days. Right. Then it was more about who you played. Right. The RPI was a, a, a much greater measure of that. The net, a far better measure of how you play. So in order to build up league-wide strength, basically you need to be winning beyond expectation. So if you're playing, you know, a, a, a guarantee game at home against a team you should beat by 20, well, you're going to hurt the net if you only win by five. Uh, and vice versa. If, if you're on the road in an up game and you pull the upset, well, that's going to move the needle uh, in the positive direction. Joe, you mentioned Florida earlier. Did they, did that win at Rupp, were they the biggest mover in your bracket in the past week? That and Butler, which won uh, late last night at Creighton. Uh, you'd have loved it, Mark, a really low-scoring defensive struggle. <laughs> yeah. Butler, eat, Butler <laughs> eked it out, 99-98. Uh, and, y you know, they've got four quad one wins, which are now, you know, the holy grail of selection and seeding. So those were the big teams moving up and then kind of dropping out at least in terms of name recognition this past week, Villanova uh, and Memphis, uh, which eked out a win today, probably not enough to help the Tigers move the needle. Can I just say that I think Joe and I are on the same page in terms of uh, coaches uh, um, telling us what they need to do to win. Forget defending and rebounding. Give <laughs> us offense, man. Yeah, Mark, I mean, it's still a game of skill, right? And we'd rather watch a 99-98 game yeah. than a 59-58 game. But any coach will also tell you an ugly win is better <laughs> than a uh, sizzling <laughs> loss, especially now that we're into the dog days of February. Those are the tones of Joe Lenardi as you see the Commodores up by eight. And trying to pick up, one of these teams going to pick up their first conference win. Joe, when I hear fans talk about the net, sometimes they get frustrated because too many analytics, too many numbers. When they start hearing things like offensive and defensive efficiency, that's when people's heads start to spin. What, what are some of the factors besides wins and losses that fans really need to keep an eye on to understand why their team moved up or down? Yeah, I think it's much more sensible and predictable than the RPI was uh, from a fan's perspective. I mean, in, in the RPI days, you could play the worst team in your league, the worst team in the country at home, win by 40 and drop 10 spots, which makes no sense on a game to game basis. Uh, in the net, what I tell people for better or worse is open the newspaper and I'm not advocating this, but look at the point spread. And if you cover, you're going to improve in the net nine times out of ten. Mm. Uh, because the net is about performing to expectations. And our friends in the desert are pretty good at setting lines <laughs> that are consistent <laughs> with those expectations. That's why they're sitting there in mansions and I'm in a dimly lit bracket box. <laughs> uh Joe, there's a big game later tonight in this league in terms of Tennessee and Kentucky. What what would that win do for each of those teams in terms of moving your needle? Let's talk Tennessee first. Uh, Tennessee is sixth overall on our board. The team right ahead of them is Arizona, which is idle until tomorrow. Uh, a Tennessee win, particularly it being of the road variety and the highest level road kind of win you can get, combined with a North Carolina loss to Duke, if that were to happen at the Dean Dome uh, right before Tennessee takes the floor, I think we could actually wake up tomorrow with the Vols on the top line. Uh, we don't know that, obviously. They may only get to the fifth spot with a win, but... Uh, to me, they're very, very much alive for a one seed at the end of the day. Now, as for UK, uh, they slipped off the top four lines, which we call protected seeds, uh, with that home loss to South Carolina, or not South Carolina, excuse me, uh, 
South Carolina won at Tennessee, but when, when they lost at home. And now they have an opportunity to try and get back at least on those top four lines. And I think it's reasonable to think between now and six weeks or now on Selection Sunday that UK will find itself in that preferred seating area for uh, an easier path to the Sweet 16 in the second weekend. Commodore's up by five despite Noah Carter's 20 points in this game, trying to spark a comeback. Joe, perhaps the final question here is time is a factor for us with you. You mentioned South Carolina. What a story they've been. Preseason dead last in the SEC. They pick up another road win today at Georgia. Where do they figure to be on the seed line now in your latest up-to-date bracketology? Yeah, they're climbing. I mean, it wasn't that long ago they were on the bubble. Now you see them as a six this morning. Uh you know, every team seat is dependent upon the performance of other teams around them in the given time frame. They're obviously going to be no worse than a six when we do a new full bracket next week. And who knows? Uh, a five could happen for them. But right now they're 24th, which means they're at the bottom of the six line. They would have to leapfrog four other teams uh, to get into a number five. And there's, you know, at that point, they're already playing with house money, mm -hmm. five, six. I think if I had walked down the street in Columbia before the season and said that, <laughs> yeah. they would have fitted me for some kind of a straitjacket. Joe, I got to tell you, man, before you go, I can't wait for your email tomorrow. But you won't have to wait that long. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always look forward to that notification when the phone buzzes, and it's the latest Lenardi Bracketology. Joe, can't say enough about the work that you do for us, and we look forward to checking in with you down the road and the rest of the way. Enjoy the ride, fellas. This is a fun time. You Thanks, Joe. Yep. Joe Lenardi, who if he misses more than one, it's a new slash because it never happens. The guy <laughs> is the safest bet in Vegas that you'll ever find in terms of who's going to get in, and very often that seating is spot on the money as well. Really appreciate Mr. Bracketology taking the time out. That was an informative segment. I always learn something when I listen to Joe Lenardi talk about net ranking and everything else, and there you see you, you can't find a sure bet out there right, right. than Joe Lenardi, 67 out of 68 the last three years. And that'll bring us to a media timeout. Nip and tuck, that's the way this game has been most of the way. It should be the same for the final 11-14. Well, Jerry Stackhouse and the Commodores hungry for their first conference win of the year. I had a great chat yesterday with stack about his career in the NBA and I asked him I said what advice would you give rookie Jerry stack at Stackhouse and he talked about enjoying it more yeah and he caught himself and he said you know what if I had enjoyed it more I might not have been as focused I don't get to talk to many guys with 18 years yeah in the NBA well and, and of course on a, on a day where much celebration if you watch game day and much of the discussion was North Carolina Duke one of the best rivalries in all of sports I always think to where I was when Jerry Stackhouse had the baseline reverse dunk at Cameron Indoor was right. one of the most electric plays I'd ever seen at that point point. and the United Center where the Bulls play Jerry Stackhouse will let you know that it's the one record Michael Jordan does not have the single game record in the United Center 57 wow by one Jerry Stackhouse now he was quick to point out he's got all the other records yes yeah, he does have quite <laughs> but a few I got that one <laughs> 57 that's back when they played defense in the NBA mind you yeah Missouri's getting mileage out of this zone and they're getting mileage crashing on the boards the offensive glass a much more dare I say aggressive team they are now plus 10 on the glass. Well, it's been one of the weaknesses of this Mizzou team. But this zone, if you're going to beat a zone, you either have to shoot a team out of a zone or rebound them out of a zone. Again, there's that double in the corner. Carter had it. 
and then it just slipped out of his hands. One of the few things that has gone wrong for Carter today. Second time today, one in each half. Ball inbounded in the corner. It's an automatic double by the Tigers. And what do we have here? I think this is a warning on the defender getting too close to the inbound passer. Be a delay of game warning. Oh, yeah, yeah, there, there it is, is right Jumping there right over the Carter. line. <laughs> That's aggressive. That is very <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> Pass out of the backcourt, and here come the Commodores up by four. Looking into that teeth of that 2 3 zone. Yeah, Rivera Torres, a better offensive player on the floor. Also in the game, the seven foot five Connor Vanover. Bates has been quiet, and he will remain that way on that miss. But just, man, do I like the early offense. Just seven points for Bates. There Short corner, ball in the middle. There's the ball in the middle. And he got a kick out. Might have gotten away with a walk. He ran right into Vanover. Gets it back in the corner, does West. And West knocks it down. Isaiah West, the two-time state champion. Back at Good Pasture Christian High in Springfield, Tennessee. He now has made as many threes today as he has made the entire year. Seven point lead for Vanderbilt. East pulls up from the baseline, spins out, and the rebound into the hands of Lubin. This young man's been aggressive. He takes it right at Vanover, and that time it does not drop from Lubin. Missouri trying to find a little flow on offense. East is typically the guy to give it to him. Almost a turnover, though. Bounce passes to guys seven foot five. Never a good idea. Bates in the middle of three oh. Vanderbilt defenders still gets it to go. Maybe that'll spark him. Get the feeling they're going to need more of that from Tamar Bates if Missouri is going to win this game. Do you like the decision to go zone here for Mizzou? Well, it certainly slowed Vanderbilt down. They made one of 13 shots. Vanover altered one shot, oh. and the follow is missed. An absolute bunny for Tyron Lawrence. He will not miss that one again. And as it stands with 734 to go, the Commodores clinging to a five point lead. Analyst, and then of course our buddy John Sunbolt, his second analyst, called the Big Eight Championship back in 1993 94, the last conference championship for Mizzou. He's called three Elite Eights. Obviously, he would love to call a Final Four, but uh, you know, some of these programs. There's been so much turnover with radio play-by-play -play guys. Right. It's rare to have a guy there as long as Mike Kelly who continues to do great work. So too does Tyron Lawrence, who now hits double digits, 10 points and six rebounds for Tyron Lawrence. That was a call out of the timeout or what coaches refer to as ATOs. Lob against the backside of the zone. I can't say enough about this Vanderbilt defense on Bates as Lewis point blank three. Mizzou gets an extra possession. Now Lewis six of 27 from beyond the arc this season. Not really known as a three point shooter. Bates everywhere he looks there's a Vanderbilt defender but it doesn't matter that time he finds just enough room to operate and hits another jumper. Don't be surprised if Mizzou's offense gets on the shoulders of Bates down the stretch. I would expect it. We've seen him take over games this year. Out of that lob on the timeout, now Mizzou goes back man to man. Seven straight points now for Bates. Five point lead for Vandy. Lawrence, drive and kick, sets up an open three for Lubin. Too strong. Lawrence flying in for the offensive rebound. One of the best rebounding guards in the league. And then a runner off the window and in for Paul Lewis.
Honor on a three. Got it. Nick Honor. Boy, did Mizzou need that. Well, you don't make the number of career threes that Honor has made in his career without some amnesia. And even though he had been firing blanks today, you got to take them when you're open, man. He was 0 for 4. He knocks down the fifth to make it a four point game. Remember, this is where Mizzou has been with teams all year mm -hmm. at the five minute mark. Lawrence draws a foul on the three by Lewis. Let's go back to the previous possession. Look at all 10 players up at the top. Lawrence is hidden behind the defender. Keep your eye on the Vanderbilt player going to go on the baseline. There's the lob, the screen, the big guy. That's well executed out of the timeout. Great pass, great finish. Well, you hit on the key number as it pertains to Missouri this year as Lawrence short on the first. And that is the final five minutes, their average margin down by four. In other words, almost every game they've played has been close, has been a two to three possession game, right. and yet they have not found a way to win one yet. Eventually, the law of averages would say they're going to win a couple of those. Will it be today? Twelve points for Lawrence. And a six point game here in the Music City as East brings it into front court. East. Gets it back in the corner. And now a loose basketball picked up. Oh, what a save! And a finish by Bates. Majok with some terrific hustle, all seven, two of them, saving that possession for Missouri. Now he's clutching his left shoulder. He might have hurt himself a little bit, crashing down to the hardwood. Majok was the first one to go to the deck, though, and he was rewarded. A four-point game, 10 on the shot clock for the Commodores. Free throw line, jumper, no. And the rebound off to Mizzou and Kurt Lewis. Bates going downhill, Bates finishes! Missouri has made five of its last six shots and it's a two-point game. On cue, Mizzou riding the shoulders right now of Jamar Bates. Again, back to the zone. And he's going to start by trying to double screen the top. And a bump foul by East with 4.01 to go. Well, this will really help Vanderbilt, who's struggling to find shots. Now they can get to the free throw line. Cash in there. Mignon, an 84% free throw shooter. Knocks down the first on Sunday afternoon. We'll have a women's basketball quadruple header, and that will include Florida at LSU. That'll be at 2 o'clock Eastern time right here on the SEC Network. Two for two for Mignon, and the Vanderbilt lead is four. And a timeout called by the Commodores. And it'll be a full timeout. And we will step aside. Eventually, 55-51, Vanderbilt leading Missouri. In the paint and create his own. And you take a look at what Bates and East have done today. Bates with 11 out of the last 14 points for Mizzou. He's had 11 in the last seven minutes. Honor dials up a deep three. That's a shot he can make, though. And it's back to the zone for Mizzou. Let's also remember Vanderbilt has two fouls to give. That may come into play down the stretch. 
Wow, what a bullet pass down low, and an and one for Lubin, all set up by a beautiful thread the needle feed from Magnon. Magnon gets into the paint, the defense collapses. What a catch though, how many miles per hour was that pass that Lubin was able to gather yeah, in? Yeah, no, Magnon gave him the heater now. <laughs> That's like trying to catch a Josh Allen screen pass at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he absolutely rifled it in there. It need every bit of that velocity and heavy traffic to find the waiting hands of Lubin who misses the free throw a six point game under three and a half to go familiar territory for Missouri. Great matchup here Lawrence and Bates. Bates doubled still tried to force it. That's just great defense by Vanderbilt Taylor in the right place to be a help defender. And a quick hands on the other end by the freshman Jordan Butler. Carter passed up the three. Drive and kick. Honor will not pass it up. He'll bury it from downtown. And it's a one possession game. Timeout Mizzou. Take another look. Carter gets it feeding in the paint. Honor was in the corner and drifted up. That's what we call moving without the ball. And that created confusion on the closeout and honor, as I talked about earlier. He, if he misses one or two threes, that's not going to bother him. Right. He understands as an older player that the game is full of runs and full of ups and downs. Nick Honor playing in his 146th <laughs> collegiate game today. It's still hard to get used to some of those numbers oh. with COVID and everything else. The amount of games some of these players have participated in. All right, let's talk a little strategy here. The final 248. What do you want to see out of both teams on the offensive end? Well, for Vanderbilt, they've got to expect the zone. Uh, it's a one possession game, plenty of possessions to go in the game. So how to attack the zone? Who should get what shot when? Execution against the zone. I like to have cutters as you take a look at our uh, possession board. Uh, I like cutters through the zone to cut, get behind the zone, come flash and, and present yourself that way and then for Missouri I'm gonna put the ball in Bates's hand yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna live or die with his ability to create his own or for others Bates has 15 the Commodores have four players in double figures it's been a more balanced attack for Vanderbilt so far in this game with a big possession coming up the Commodores up by three and so what does Mizzou do they go man to man try to mix it up Mignon going to try to get everybody in the right place here. Seven to shoot. Mignon, killer crossover, not once but twice. Kick out pass, going to have to fire. Lawrence just throws up a prayer, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Suffocating D by Mizzou. Such great defensive patience by the Tigers. And I love the move, as you mentioned, coming out of the timeout, switching from zone to man. Give them a different look. Don't be surprised that Mizzou goes back zone, though. Bates to Carter. Oh, Carter left alone. Best look he's had all game, but an extra possession for Mizzou. Honor fouled, and Honor throws it up at the rim. He'll get a pair of free throws. Nice job by Honor getting into the paint, attracting the foul. Guy that really doesn't go to the line that often, but 82%. Feet in the paint, jump stop. Defender had already reached in. Yeah, Paul Lewis. And Honor, all those games that he's played, he knows how to sell a foul. <laughs> he knows what he's doing out there. Honor an 82% free throw shooter. Well, on Tuesday night, right here on the SEC Network, we've got Kentucky at Vanderbilt right here at Memorial Gym. That'll be at 8.30 Eastern time. 
I'm very curious to see how Kentucky will perform today. Yeah. If they're not careful back-to-back -back losses at Rupp Arena. I know one thing. They better connect the dots defensively. Boom. Puntastic is Mark <laughs> Wise. Late season form. One-point game here. 57-56. Game on. Mizzou does stay in the man-to-man. -man. A lot of motion for Vanderbilt. Switching all over the place for Missouri. Shot clock at five. Tough shot. And a beautiful effort that time by the southpaw, Evan Taylor. That's the second time late in a clock, one in each half, that he's delivered in the mid-range. Back to a three-point game. Bates ran right into some hands and then traveled. Late clock possession to Taylor again. Good clock recognition. No, just he's got a limited amount of time. Left-hander turns back over his right shoulder. A little bit of a fadeaway. Nothing but the bottom. Dennis Gates hollering at Pat Adams. He wanted a hold call before the walk. Bates got himself into trouble when he picked up the dribble. And a little 2-2-1. Two, two, Big defensive possession here for Mizzou. Under a minute to play. A little weave action up top. Now eight to shoot. Lawrence working on honor. Rise and fire. Got it! With one second left on the shot clock. These are just great individual efforts. One by Taylor, and then the last one by Lawrence. 14 points and eight rebounds for Tyron Lawrence. A lot of three-man weave, false action, if you will, all designed to move the defense. Lawrence, Honor does a great job. Stays in front, he just elevates over Honor for the mid-range jumper. And what a clutch shot by the senior from Monticello, Georgia. You know, you and I have gotten to see the, the very best teams in this league and, yep. and the stars. People are familiar with the stars on Kentucky and Tennessee and Auburn, Alabama, et cetera. Tyron Lawrence is a guy that is a really good player, but you don't hear about him as much this year. His numbers are a little bit down, and of course, Vanderbilt is still looking for its first win, but Tyron Lawrence is an exceptional basketball player. Yeah, he's in double figures for the 11th straight game, averaging over 15 points per game with four 20-plus games. So he gives Jerry Stackhouse an offensive punch. But for Vanderbilt and Jerry Stackhouse right now, it's all about getting a stop. And let's remember that Vanderbilt still has the foul to give. Five-point game, 42 seconds. Missouri is out of timeouts now. And Mizzou, there's plenty of time. Don't panic right. with the shot that you get. You don't have to have a three. You do not have to have a three here with this much time. But Two. if you don't score, you have to start fouling. Too often you see players feel like they have to launch a desperation three here. Right. You don't have to. It's two possessions no matter how you slice it. And a deuce will make it one possession. That's right. Now this Commodore crowd on a beautiful Saturday here in Nashville, sunshine unseasonably warm temperatures and trying to lead their team to their first conference win of the year. East. Isolation at the top for Bates. Bates drives and draws the foul. When in doubt, <laughs> go to number two in black. He's a lefty, but that time he probes the right side and draws the foul on the shot. I think that may have confused the defender just a little bit because they overplayed to his strong to his side. Left, yep. Yeah, that that's yeah, that time it was Williams guarding him. Uh, that's a great point. And, and Williams did what he's supposed to do. Right. Don't let him go to his left side. Take what the defense gives you. Bates tickles the twine on the first to make it 61-57. I don't think 
even if Bates makes this, Missouri cannot play a clock game because there's only 3.5 differential. I would look for a press, double team in backcourt, double team in front court, and then foul. Three-point game again, Missouri without a timeout the rest of the way. Again, down the floor defensively, diamond and one. Keep your eye on Carter, 35 and black. He's the safety, if you will. Comes in the Mignon, and he's immediately fouled. I don't mind the quick foul there. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, you tried to get your hard double set, but Mignon was too quick and kind of in, in, invited the foul, if you will, mm -hmm. trying to split defenders I mean, before it, the trap could get there. And it took all of one second off the clock. Right. Yeah, make, you, want, you want as many possessions if right. you're Missouri as possible now. Make him make clutch free throws. He does make the first. And I still think with this much time, if he makes this, you do not have to panic with a three for Missouri. Right. Two for two for Mignon, the veteran leader, clutch at the line. Lewis back on the floor, a little offense, defensive substitution for Dennis Gates. East racing in the front court. You got Bates at the free throw line. Instead, it's a corner shot by Lewis and a rebound by Mignon, and he's fouled. Wow, that was a quick trigger, wasn't it, by Lewis? Well, I think we were all a little surprised that that was the shot. Because you've got Bates who's starting to get into a roll. You've got Honor. And I mean, you've got East. He's open, no question yeah. about it. And Mignon, meanwhile, three clutch free throws, 15 points now. Now, if he makes this as a three possession game, and Missouri must take a three. Mm -hmm. That one rims off. So the two possession game under 20 seconds to play. I think you still need a three. Honor going to hoist one. And oh. hit. Again, no timeouts left. 12.9 remaining. A one possession game. Maybe a hard trap, but then foul. East. Oh, he had his hand on it. And a foul. Pat Adams blows the whistle, calls the foul. It'll go against Honor. Nick Honor just creates his own look. Little sidestep, if you will. Knocks that down with confidence, makes it a one possession game. Lubin at the free throw line has been solid all year, 81%. Outstanding for a big guy. Watch this last foul, how close East was to maybe getting a steal there. Yeah. I'm of the opinion Missouri still needs a three now. I mean, I mean you could go down and get, if you could go coast to coast yeah. for a quick two, I don't like it. Get a three. Now you're going to have to do whatever you do. It's going to have to be quick. Comes in the east. Precious seconds ticking away. East is going to take it all the way, and that'll be a goal ten. So it's back to a one possession game. 4.7. But they're going to review this because a call was made. And again, Pat Adams, Bart Lennox, Byron Jarrett. I, I think that's officials. a good block. I think Bart Lennox is, is the guy who called it. We had a good angle because we Was it at its apex or did it go off the window? I don't think so. I think this is a good block. They are looking to our left, the DV Sports system. And two monitors, you've got Lennox and Adams, two veteran officials taking another look. I, I'd love another angle. It definitely does not hit the glass first. Now, did, was it already at its apex on its way down? I think he hits it into the backboard. This is a good block. Yeah. I'm going to be shocked if they don't un overturn this. One thing I will say, I love the fact that we're reviewing a play like yes. this. Yes. It's too crucial yes. a play to not do it. It's a scoring play. One more look. 
But what an individual effort by Lubin. The ball only goes off the glass after Lubin blocks it. And then, of course, you have to decide possession. Well, the verdict is about to come in. You see Bart Lennox talking to Jerry Stackhouse now. Hold up. Yep. There we go. Pat Adams just telling us, like you said, partner, the goaltending call has been reversed. And so now you put 5.5 on the clock. And you take two points off the board for Missouri, well, that would make it 66 to 61. Real quickly, I want to talk about Dickie Nutt, the assistant for Missouri, who went public with his cancer fight. As you take a look at some three-point shooting, this will be his last game. He's going to take a leave of absence and, and uh, be away from the team during treatment. So our best to the Dickie Nutt, the Nutt family, the basketball family at Mizzou. Absolutely a class act. Had a great conversation with Coach Nutt yesterday who's been with Dennis Gates for a long time and a huge believer of what Coach Gates is doing turning around this Missouri program. So you see they took the two points off. It's a five point game five and a half to go. Pat Adams again giving a warning to the Mizzou bench and this is all about the assistant coaches. Commodores get it in, quick foul with 4.6. Well, you talked about Kentucky coming in here on Tuesday night. Post-game meal will taste better for the Commodores yeah. today, though. <laughs> well, look, you and I have been doing a lot of games in this conference. I can't remember us ever having a game where 0-7 met 0-8. Right, eight. right. And I would also say this. I've never had a game with two teams that honestly both deserve a better fate. Like, we've yes. had some teams that have just laid down and it's yes. that kind of year and there's going to be a coaching change. That's not been the case with Vanderbilt and Missouri. It's been maximum effort. Both teams have been working Short really hard. Short-handed rosters yep. for both teams. Honor at the buzzer. That'll do it. Vanderbilt has an elusive first conference win of the season. 68 to 61 the final score the Commodores now one and seven in SEC play four players in double figures for Vandy. I'm going to go back to the X Factor guy Isaiah West who made four threes matching his yeah. season number. That is a big impact on this game and when in doubt Tyron Lawrence comes up big 14 points eight rebounds some clutch play by him and clutch free throws by Mignon seven of eight at the line in route to the win. That'll do it for us for Mark Wise and our entire SEC Network crew. Mike Morgan saying so long from Memorial Gym. The Commodores have their first conference win of the year.